Welcome back to another week of tier list. This is for fall 2024 week three, four, I forget, but this is basically where I go over the most recent episodes that I've watched. Sunday being the cutoff. So whatever is airing today, I think it's Adi Furata and the yapping anime that those episodes won't be counted. But, you know, last Monday's episodes will be counted. All right. First up, let's talk about healer got banished. You know, so far, I thought this shit was mid. I thought it was very mid, and it was. But episode three, I'm starting to realize that the idiot hero that kicked us out is hard carrying this show. Without him, you don't have this like anger. You don't have this feeling of, oh, I want to correct him. I want to get revenge. I want to pop off. That blonde idiot is actually hard carrying the show. And like, like the first two episodes, do we really give a fuck about Narsena and the main character, Laust? Like, battling shitty monsters watching mid animation no no one cares but once you get the interpersonal beef going right it's actually getting pretty good i'm gonna put it in good i thought it was pretty good next up blue box is officially dropped if you don't know i, I can't believe there's actually retards complaining and begging of where is the next blue lock reaction motherfucker go check the fucking blue lock blue box playlist there is an issue with copyright. If you don't know how this shit works, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I, all I can do is I'm literally making videos explaining what's happening. And like, I spoon feed you this shit and still not enough for you idiots to understand what's going on. Literally, what? where is this? I got more bad news. It's in the fucking blue box tier list. Sorry, playlist. Copyright details, right? That copyright. It's that simple. TMS Anime, they're going after blue box reactions. It's blocked. There's nothing you can do about it. Freshest Anime's got clapped. Everyone got clapped. Funny enough, though, the interesting thing about this currently is that blue box episodes two and three didn't get blocked. And let's try to think about that. Because if you look at it, episode two and three actually still exists. Actually, only episode three does. I guess episode two got blocked as well. I don't know. Maybe because I had blue box in the title. No, I don't think it really matters, but that's basically what's going on. It's also really funny that <laughs> these update videos get a lot more views than the actual episodes, but wah wah. It is what it is. Blame TMS Anime. Next up, Dragon Ball Daima was. Listen, it was a fucking setup episode, and for a show like Dragon Ball, where. It the entire point of it is just unga boonga fights. There's nothing happening. Don't tell me the last episode was the most peak shit you ever saw. It's just more exposition, more setup, nothing wrong with it. We'll be waiting for the fight scenes to happen. It can chill here for now. Let's talk about Power of God. Now, Power of God, last night's episode, usually I put Power of God in mid. Because, like, I have such high expectations. Remember, Tower of God and Blue Lock are the most biased ratings from me because I expect it to do way better. I have higher expectations from great shows like that. But the adaptation is so fucking sad that I can't put it in good. Like, the thorn scene, it was alright. It was definitely, like, above average animation. But if that's the only hype part and everything else is just eh. The more, it's, it's weird how season one, I was so invested. The mystique of the show made me just really go deep into the cut content lore and dive into this world. But in season two, it just actually feels like any generic standard anime. I genuinely don't give a fuck about the plot. And I don't think you do either. How could you? When the story just seems to just mix and match everywhere and everything is just so fucking generic mid looking. It's actually crazy how even like a good source material can be experienced as just generic mid due to the adaptation. I'm putting this shit in mid. Even if the thorn scene was hype, right? Even if the thorn scene was hype, like, unless the entire fucking episode was that good, fuck you. I'm tired of this bullshit, but I'll still watch. Next up, let's talk about Orb. I thought that Orb was pretty good. We got a new... Well, the story is actually starting now. We got a new main character. A lot of people are actually upset about that. It's interesting how many people cared so much about the plot twist. Episode 3, the main character isn't the main character. Oh my god, but also a lot of people are upset. It's like, I can't believe you did this to me. 
I don't know, man. I think that is pretty interesting how we kind of time skip into the 10 years into the future. Everything that we expected has just been thrown out the water. But the ideology of heliocentrism moves on and we're kind of setting up these new characters. The main character is kind of fucking crazy. Oxy. O-C-Z-Y. But you know, in anime, we've got to pronounce that in the weirdest way fucking possible. Okuze. He is um a nutcase. But so is everyone around him. And we're getting to see like this disparity between nobles and like the commoners. Or like these duelists that goes around killing for money. Does heaven exist? Are we believing a comfortable lie? Are we restraining ourselves? Maybe the pursuit of truth is the actual, you know, liberation and fulfillment of this world, and we're all living an innocent lie. It was decent setup and decent, you know, just like introduction getting back into the show. I think it was a good episode. I think it was a good episode. Let's talk about Ari Furata. Ari Furata is back, baby. I'm not talking about today's Ari Furata episode. I'm talking about last week's. And last week's episode, it was nice to do a little bit quick recap. The bunny clans are funny as fuck. The gang is all back. Shea flipping her teeth. The ass scene. The fan service is all there. Everything I remember of Ari Furata is back. But the animation quality. Are we getting baited? Are we getting catfished? Is the next couple episodes going to be mid? I don't know. But that first episode was a great way to settle us back. We're going to be heading towards the Empire. The bunny clans, you know, the head that... The father is captured, but it doesn't really look like it. The ending scene, you know, he's like all part of the plan. So they're cooking with something. I think that it was definitely a great episode. There was definitely a bias, though, for like first episode of the season where I'm going to... It feels nice to have it back. So I'm like, hype, hype, hype. Let's talk about Don Dandadan. I thought that the Don Dandadan episode was... Let's think about it. Granny. Introduction of Granny, it was kind of set up. Was it peak? Not compared to the last two episodes. I think it was just great overall. The Granny was sick. But did something insane really happen? Not really. It's just Granny set up. Our new game plan. Okarun and Ayase getting a little bit closer. Granny and Ayase showing us new styles. It's nice. I think it was great overall. Let's see. Next. Appraisal Isekai. It was good. It was good. Was it great? Maybe. I mean, the battle isn't that amazing. We're getting a bit of payoff now. We're going to attack... The battle between the mages honestly felt fraudulent because they all de depend on this fucking, you know, mono water. Um, it was all right. It, it was it was good. It was good. I, I think that there is definitely a standard difference. Ah, it's probably top of good. Maybe here, but I'm going to put it top of good for now. It's fun. It's chill. It's just I don't think the viewers really give a fuck. Nah, viewers really don't give a fuck about this. Appraisal's hanging on. I'm actually more invested into appraisal. We'll talk about Maid later on. Let's talk about Danmachi. Yep, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I don't care. I'm actually like so invested into the Danmachi story. The slice of life dates continue. It sheds more light on like who the last hero was. Albert, you know, the hero's bridge. All the other girls getting cucked, but helping, you know, helping Seer out. Seer being so ballsy and selfish, because this is probably like the last night of freedom she'll ever get. It's honestly very fun. It's extremely fun. I'm having a lot of fun watching it. There's not a lot of people watching Danmachi. Danmachi is pretty much dead on YouTube. Like, again, it's just such a long fucking show. We're on season five right now, so I don't really blame you, but... The viewers, the, even though the viewers are, you know, the viewership is definitely bad, it's still very fun for me. It's like one of those shows where it's like, I don't care how it performs. I'm, I just want to keep watching. Next up. Uh -huh. I'm trying to balance the goods and the bads. Let's talk about Maid. I think that Nate is very mid. And it's not mid because of the animation. 
No, it's a very polished show. Made is a very interesting example where if it didn't have that production value polish, would it even be good? I, I don't know. It's just there's nothing fucking happening. It's just made trauma us hanging out. It's slice stuff. It's very slow burn. It's very slow burn. And it's very just nothing. You're just chilling. You're just chilling and there's nothing wrong with it. But even if you're just chilling, you would think that Maid would perform really well. But Maid does extremely bad. It's actually the lowest performing show on my channel, which is mind blowing. Usually cute slice of life, you know, rom-com stuff. It does really well on my channel. But this show, it does not resonate with anybody. There's something about this show that people just don't give a fuck about. And I think it's just because the plot is boring. The show looks fantastic, but the plot is fucking boring. It is what it is. And it's most likely going to get dropped. It's most likely going to get dropped. I think the most recent episode is just this, but it's most likely going to get dropped. Thursdays, there's way too many fucking animes. We're covering five separate weeklies. I can't be having that shit. I got to drop one of them. And it's actually so sad that this fucking show, this dumbass healer got banished show, which has probably like a third of the budget that Maid has, is performing better. Because this blonde idiot's carrying. It doesn't matter how good your waifu is. It doesn't matter how amazing your animation looks. The plot for Hila got kicked out is more spicy and people enjoy that shit even if it's mid animation. It is what it is. People vote with their viewership and it is what it is. Next up. Let's talk about this show. Dare I say, it's another good episode. The, the milk memes got even more ridiculous. Should I put it here just for the fucking milk memes? The milk memes were fucking crazy. It's not just the mom, it's the daughter also. <laughs> and now we're also like getting taken. We're getting sent to the capital. There's like this extra faction that has more political clout. It's a lot of bullshit happening, but they're setting up some like, like, Similar to how, you know, the blonde idiots, you know, creating a lot of friction and drama and making us, you know, have fun. The same thing is happening here where everyone is basically so mean to the Lamia girl and Doran is kind of sticking around and we're being brought into the capital. I'm sure something crazy is going to fucking happen. I think that I'll put this here. I, I, I think that it's definitely good. I think it was a very good episode. Nothing really popped off, but the milk beams were fucking crazy. I'm surprisingly having a lot of fun watching it so far. Next up. Loner Life. Loner Life continues to be really fun. I feel like it should be here or here. What happened in the most recent episode? Well, we kind of like got out of the forest and we helped out random people out in the open. Our main character is... Realizing that his powers may not actually be mid. No, I don't think so. He thinks that they're his his skills are mid, but he has godlike powers. He's literally flying at this point. We get to meet new Isekai natural people. We get to have more uh, explanation on what's happening with the other groups. There is this, not subjugate, that's what we have, but there is this uh, stealing skill, right? Hijack. And the class rep has it. But why did the mysterious guy that is quote-unquote kidnapped by the delinquent group looking so evil and sinister and he even chokes someone out the logic should be that he should have it unless he has another skill where you kill someone and you get something out of it i don't know they're cooking up some mystery there a lot of people might not like the direction of learner life isekai but i think a lot of people actually do it so it's definitely one of the best performing shows on my channel right now in terms of weekly shows it's doing really well it's doing really fucking well so i'm enjoying it I think it's definitely top of good. Next up. Is this show funny or mid? Is Grieving Souls funny or is it mid? I honestly thought that the sister introduction was fucked up. The way that she was treating Tino was beyond bizarre. And I get it, that's the whole point. But holy fuck, it was less funny and more like, what the hell? You're so mean. 
And then the funny parts, I guess, when she switches up, when Liz starts talking to Krai. Um, sometimes the comedy is more annoying than funny to me. You know how Perry, I parry everything last season. You know how I was actually getting pissed. Like the whole element, the formula for the comedy is him being stupid and the misunderstandings. Sometimes it's more frustrating than funny. It's, I think it's good. I think it's good. Probably here somewhere. It's just, I don't know. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, it was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Part of me is feels frustrated when the funny parts are coming on. It's like, am I supposed to be laughing right now? I don't know. There are definitely funny moments, for sure. I mean, the wolves, <laughs> the wolves reactions to everybody last episode was pretty funny, but the most recent episode, I guess the funniest part was when Liz caught all the bullets and laid them all on the ground and me talking about how to everyone else, it seems like it happened in an instant, but you have to realize that she's setting everything up, you know, step by step in a really fast way. That was pretty funny. It's good. I don't think it's terrible. It's good. It's enjoyable. Next up. Mao 2099. I feel like it's here or here. The most recent episode was exposition and setup. It was pretty fucking fun though. The whole like nine to five job interview, he's, he's getting rejected. Seeing the more futuristic ways of shopping. Trying to figure out what kind of job can he get. The bartender's like, all right, here, I'll turn the TV on. You should just be a fucking streamer. I feel like it should maybe be down here. Yeah. I, I don't know. When I compare like these two, and even Ari Furata, this is like a first episode buff. This is like first episode buff. If it wasn't first episode coming back and nostalgia hitting me, it should probably be down here. But it's just like first episode buff, so I'm putting it up here. 2099, it was an interesting and fun and like a very enjoyable uh, setup for me. And the whole corporate aspect of this world is very relatable to me. That's why I'm finding it a lot of fun. Some people might find it boring, but me, I find this shit very, very fun. But I'll put it here for now. All right. It's weird how at this point, I, I think that I enjoy watching this more than this. I think we have more fun watching this than this, to be honest. Honestly, more than this. But I'm not gonna put it in good. Why? Because it's fucking... Because 8-Bit Studios is fucking up. Even if it's like relatively fun to watch, mostly because I'm shitting on it together with you guys. Come on, bro. PNG lock being slided everywhere. It's just a fucking tragedy. There's some hype moments. For sure, there's some hype moments. I'll, I'll put it at the top of mid, I guess. Yeah, I think, I think something like this. I'll put it at the top of mid, but like, ugh, it's 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 fun to watch, but it hurts me. And I would never want to place. It's not even a fucking anime, bro. It's a fucking manga react. It's not even a manga reaction. The fan animations are even funnier. It is what it is. We'll be waiting for the U20 arc. We'll see what they're cooking with. Uh, the best part about this is the in the influx of community memes coming in. The amount of people just shitting on having fun, you know, memeing on Blue Lock. It's it's actually pretty fun, but. You know, it's, it's just like, come on, man. Is this really the extent of what you can do? Let's talk about this. Yapping was also set up. We're just introducing a new girl, assassin, assassin clan. She wants to find us. We're going on a mission. There's some fan service. But aside from that, nothing really went crazy. It's just an enjoyable setup episode. Villainous also. It's the same shit, right? There, honestly, this week of anime is mostly just all fucking setup. It's all just fucking setup bullshit. What happened? Uh, there's a divergent. I think a divergent is supposed to be someone that kind of like loses. Uh, well, there's a couple different examples. But if you try to use magic that's too higher than your level, then you might go crazy and never use your magic again. I'm not sure if that's exactly what a Divergent is, but the fact that we were so young using high-level magic, they're like, what the fuck? This is kind of dangerous. So we're already suspicious. We're going into the Magic Academy. 
the heroine is way too fucking nice, but that's her character. And that's pretty much it, right? It's just setting up for the next arc. It was an enjoyable episode. And you know where this shit's gonna go. ReZero always goes into peak tier because I just have a, such a heavy bias with ReZero. And I believe that it is actually on a different caliber compared to most Danbury anime. I think that Dandadan probably should be here, but maybe it's crazy for me to put Dandadan here. Let's rethink Dandadan. The granny scenes, Okaru. It was just a setup. It's far, but ReZero was also quote unquote setup? Not really. It was the conclusion of Regulus versus Subaru, if you could even call that a fight. More just crazy revelations on exactly what's happening in Priestella. Every command tower is taken. Most likely a checkpoint has been made. We have an um, idea of what the cult wants. And they're trying to get the remains of a witch. And it's most likely Witch of Pride. Cut content tells us that Witch of Pride T-Phone was drowned it's getting pretty crazy it is i think that rezero being peak is perfectly fine what am i saying perfectly it's my fucking bias tier list of course it's perfectly fine for me the garf crying scene it was heart touching for sure but crying scenes like that i don't value it like <laughs> you know how i am i'm here saying Suck it up, pussy. Stop fucking crying. Deliver results. No one gives a fuck about your problems. I'm just a very harsh person, so sentimental moments like this doesn't get a high rating from me. It's just... It's still in, it's still entertaining. It's still entertaining. Mimi fan service. The Mimi slice of life is very worrisome. The more Mimi we get, the more I realize that Mimi's probably gonna die, but it is what it is. Is this... The list of anime that we're comfortable with today. I feel like Dandadan should be here, but I'm gonna put this here. Again, Rizuru, I got, I got a bias for these two shows. Dandadan was a great episode. I don't think it was on some next level shit like episode 1 and 2 though. And that's perfectly fine. Not every episode needs to be peak. Arifreta, first episode buff. It probably shouldn't be here, but it was still very enjoyable. Nice to see, you know, the nostalgia hit back. All these shows here... Aside from, I guess, I, I, honestly, this was a pop-off episode, and this was a pop-off episode. But to me, this is, it's sometimes more frustrating and annoying than funny. And this is, it was pop-off, but was it truly popping off? It, the meter animation is nice. It's nice, but I think I have a diluted sense of what amazing animation is because of so much fucking garbage that exists like this, and you know what's going on here. Until they get their shit together, I'm not going to place this shit down up there. Power of God, I don't know if I'm ever going to place it above good anymore, above mid anymore. I think this is perfectly fine. It's basically a week of a lot of setup, exposition. The episodes that did pop up didn't completely resonate with me. There's a lot of bias for here, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty much it for this week's of tier list. And if you're fucking mad at this, you want to fucking cry, I want you to know that you're such a pathetic loser getting upset at a random person's opinion about anime. And you probably jumped to the end and didn't even hear the logic of how this shit was made. So you're probably crying because- Oh, you, how do you, you fucking loser. Get a grip.